What was the best part of growing up in New Jersey? Jersey was great. Jersey, first of all, is a beautiful place to grow up. I mean, I used to say that I'm from Jersey and people would be like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's ridiculous because these people have never been to New Jersey because Jersey is actually beautiful. And if, you know, once you leave the city, the first thing you see is like factories and, you know, not so pleasant places. But it's, if you just keep driving into New Jersey, it's lush and gorgeous. And, you know, we grew up right next to this reservation, this Indian reservation um, where I rode horses growing up. So um, Jersey was great because it was, you know, we lived half an hour from New York City and, you um, and yet we grew up in a beautiful place surrounded by woods and trees. So that was nice. I liked that. If you weren't acting, if you hadn't become a model and like gone down that road, what do you think you might be doing? Oh, I would be a doctor for sure. I was going to be a doctor. I was going to follow my father's footsteps. And that was my plan. That was my goal. And um, that's another reason why I love, um, you know, I love learning about the body and about physiology and about how the body works. And, you know, in my first book, I mean, we talk a lot about organs, <laughs> you know, which is, you know, we made it palatable. Um, but no, educating people about body and, and my mother being a chef and teaching me all that, like body and food has always been um, a major thing for me. So you've always been interested in how your body works and, you know, how to stay healthy and take care of yourself, but like when was the first time you really made that connection to food? My connection to food has been there since I was a kid because of, you know, watching my mother in the kitchen and, um, and we were also very unorthodox. Like we, my mother would go to restaurants in New York during the day. She had a, um, a Zagat's guide, which she calls the Gots. And she would go to these restaurants in New York and then try a bunch of things on the menu and come home and perfect the recipes. And that's like something that she did. And we never had bedtimes. We were never told to do our homework. We, we all pretty much just kind of made our own schedule, which in some ways I thrived in that freedom. And um, I did really well with that. Um, other personalities, you know, like, uh, you know, some of my other siblings now were like, maybe they needed a little more structure. But for me, I did really well with that freedom, and I um, started working really hard as a, at you know a young age. But I would watch my mother in the kitchen, and she was so stubborn in a wonderful way. Like it was almost inspiring. And when she couldn't get something right, you know, she would just keep doing it and doing it until she perfected it. And she would do that with these recipes. And she would cook. We would go to sleep for school, and then we would be woken up around midnight or one in the morning. And then we would come, and this was a nightly thing, and this is just how we did it in our house. And we would come into the kitchen, and there would be a huge spread on um, in these really beautiful dishes on these hot trays. And that's what she did every night. She would make this, like, beautiful buffet every night. And then we would eat, and then we would go back to sleep and go to school the next morning. And then she would, you know, sleep really late. If I wanted her to go to, like, a parent-teacher conference or something, it was like pulling teeth. She was just not... She wasn't like a typical, it wasn't a, a typical upbringing. Um, I remember when for Spanish class, we needed to do like a potluck where we had to, all the kids, had to, the mother had to like cook something and bring it in. And they were bringing in, you know, like, you know, whatever, Uncle Ben's rice or whatever, like thrown into a thing with some Spanish spice. You know, like a lot of mothers were just like, you know, like working moms. They don't have a lot of time to do this. So they would just make like a casserole or something. I get it. My mother made 25 homemade individual flans and she brought them in. And a flan is like this custard with this sauce that, that drizzles over the top. And she brought in 25 individual ones and she would flip them over with the sauce running down. And like the students were like <laughs> staring like, what is happening? All the other mothers were like, uh, I couldn't even comprehend how she did this. And it was so, so this is like the type of, that's the type of woman she was. Um, and it was just very, so from, from her, she really taught me so much about food. And she was always very into organic and where the food comes from. And, but she was a, a much more like, you know, she didn't really shop at farmer's markets. She knew the importance of organic. Um, and I basically learned from her, like the love of food and the love of cooking and, 
the way that she showed her love was through food. What are your siblings like? You said that you're the youngest of five. Yes. Um, it's, I mean, it's so funny because with like the kind of mother we had, it's like we all just, it affected us in very different ways. Um, so it's me, then we're all in two year increments. So my brother is two years older than me. And then there's my sister, Danny, then Jocelyn, and then Stephanie. And we're all vastly different, but we all, you know, get along, which is great. Um, I think also as you kind of, you know, get older and you realize how lucky you are to have siblings and to have a family. Like I've always loved being part of a big family. Um, but we're all, we're all very different though. And I'm the only actor, no one else acts or anything, but, um, it's very funny when we all, it's a, it's a big, loud, you know, we're like half Irish, half, half Russian, we're loud, you know, everyone likes having a good time. We like to eat, we like to drink. It's like a lot of gluttony, you know what I mean? It's really fun when we all get together. Did they ever, did any of them become a doctor? No, no, nobody, nobody followed uh, in the medical, in the medical path. We all kind of did our own thing. Did your dad want any of you to be doctors? Was, was that like something that he um, uh, my dad, well, my dad passed when I was pretty young, so I don't really, I think he would have been proud, of course. He passed when I was in my early teens, so he didn't ever even know I was acting or anything, because he, he passed away before all that even started. What do you think he would think to see you on TV now, or to see you making food and cooking and really, like, caring about how your body works? Yeah, I think he'd love the the cooking part of it. I think the rest of it, he's, you know, he'd be like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, my family is very, like, okay, cool. Laura's, like, doing that TV thing over there. Um, and it's not, like, a huge – it's, like, my job. You know what I mean? But when, when the family comes together, it's about the family, which is great. And uh, I think that, you know, one thing – my mom did instill in us when we were younger is just really taking the time to, to be with your family. Um, and that no matter what happens with your job or whatever, family is really the most important thing. Um, we've always been very heavy on the family thing. What do you do to relax when you feel overwhelmed? It's a good question because, you know, now that I have a daughter, it's every, you know, everything shifts. So what I used to do before to relax is different. But, um, you know, hanging out with my daughter relaxes me, um, just spending time with her. And you know what I do to relax? Honestly, I cook. Uh, when I cook, it's like very meditative for me. It's um, like I would, you know, especially when you're directing, you're working really long hours and I would come home and, and you're dead tired because on day, you're, all day, your brain is just firing, firing, firing like every second. And then even during lunch, you know, I, there's no, we only take a half an hour lunch break on the show, but it's, um, even during lunch, you're like figuring out, planning, whatever, like your brain's just firing all day, you know? And I would get home from work and I would still cook. There were some nights where I was like, I'm over it. I'm putting cheese on a, like on a cutting board and just eating whatever. Um, but there were definitely times where if I had the time, because look, if you get home at nine o'clock at night and you have to wake up again at five to spend, you know, some time cooking is, it's not feasible. But, um, but there's times even with a long day that I would like to cook just to like mellow out and, uh, working out. If I have the time, I always try to work out because that always helps with stress for me. And it's funny because I'll fall into this too if my schedule's insane. I'm like, I don't have time to work out, but it's so important to try to squeeze in any anything, even if it's a 15 minute walk, it doesn't matter. Like just moving your body and just getting those endorphins and like breaking a sweat. One thing for me was breaking a sweat. If I break a sweat, like I'm good. It wakes me up, it makes me feel refreshed. It shakes off the sleep fog. It keeps me sharp. It helps my energy and my mood. That helps a lot. What's one thing you would tell 15-year-old you? Like one thing you have learned since then that you wish you knew then? I think one thing I would definitely tell myself is don't sweat the small stuff. And I know that sounds like this thing that you hear people say, but it's so true. Um, you know, since I've had my daughter, I, 
I know what like real stress is, you know, in terms of like when you have a kid for the first time and you're so like terrified, just making sure that you're doing the right thing, especially in those first early days. And there's so much like anxiety and worry about making sure that she's safe and healthy and eating enough and, and breathing and like whatever. It's, it's very, um, it was for me, it was very, uh, I was so worried in the beginning. I was so worried about her all the time. And I feel like that's really just put so many other things into perspective um, in the sense that like, whether it's with directing or acting or anything, I mean, you have a lot of, and with a lot of our jobs, there's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of stress that can happen. But I feel like in terms of priorities, um, you know, many people have called me like a workaholic and that I, I tend to do everything all the time. <laughs> and that's just something I've always done. I think it's because I was on my own at such a young age. I just, you know, if something had to be done, I just did it. And I didn't really think about it. I just did the thing that needed to be done. Um, and I just think that not, and I've never, I'm not like a stressful person. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a worrier or anything uh, before I, I had my daughter. But um, I think that would just be the main thing of like, your priorities are going to get figured. <laughs> but like, don't, you just don't stress about, just don't sweat the small stuff is what I would say. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. We're going to cut this up in a few different videos. So subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can know when we post a new one. And thanks so much for watching and see you guys next time.